Oh, hi, I'm Jeff Strong. I'm creator of Rhythmic and Treatment Intervention and co-founder and creative director of BrainShiftRadio.com. And today I want to talk about alpha tempo rhythms. Uh, last video I did, I talked about um, entraining the brain into theta and what theta means um, and how to approach uh, different styles of, of drumming to get to different layers uh, and levels of theta. In this video, I want to talk about alpha and train into alpha. Now, alpha is a state of consciousness that's considered the relaxed alert state. It exists between about 8 and 13 cycles per second, or hertz. Um, it's an outwardly directed state where we're calm and relaxed, uh, we're receptive, uh, we process sensory information um, in a very efficient way. And uh, this is the state that all the REI, or Rhythmic Entrainment Intervention, recordings uh, utilize. So we want people to be externally directed. We don't want them to be in an altered state of consciousness so much. We want them really to be engaged in their surroundings. And so when we create calm, we create calm by going to the low end of the alpha state of consciousness. And um, then when we do focus, we sometimes stay at the low end, but we can go all the way up to the high end of alpha, around 12 beats per second, which is really quick. Um, and, um, and training to alpha is a little tricky because when we're outwardly directed, when we're awake and aware, uh, our brains need a certain amount of stimulus in order to stay engaged. Uh, repetition, a repetitive stimulus kind of shuts the brain down. Uh, we become habituated to it, uh, we develop a tolerance to it, and our brains just don't respond to the stimulus any longer. So if I were to play the shamanic rhythm, for instance, that I um, that is typically used for the low end of theta, uh, which is a very steady, repetitive pulse. Uh, this is something that's been used for tens of thousands of years to drive people down to the lowest end of theta, this altered state, internally directed meditative state. Um, if I sped that up to eight beats per second, it really doesn't work, and I'll show it to you. I'll play for you the theta rhythm uh, at four beats per second, which is where it's traditionally used, the very repetitive rhythm. It goes like this. Now, if you were to listen to this for a period of time where your brain would get engaged to it, uh, entrainment takes anywhere from 12 to 17 minutes the first time you experience it and it happens much quicker each time you listen. So if you become used to doing this and you're listening to these rhythms pretty frequently, you could get into this altered state very quickly. Um, this is the traditional shamanic rhythm um, that's used to bring people down into the lowest end of theta. Take that same rhythm and play it at the lowest end of alpha, which is eight beats per second, double the tempo I just played, and it sounds like this. Um, it's kind of annoying. It's, it's just bombard you with repetitive, non-changing uh, stimulus. That's not going to entrain your brain. Your brain's not going to respond to that. So we need to change it around a little bit. And the way to do that is to start c creating variations in the rhythm. Now in the last video I talked about theta. You get into the middle end of theta and you start changing the rhythm a little bit in order to um, facilitate that, that entrainment aspect and engage the brain at that level. So at the low end, you can have very repetitive, kind of in the middle end, you know, maybe six beats per second. You can have a rhythm that has some variability to it, but it doesn't have to change very much. It can stay pretty much the same. Um, maybe minor inflections that you'll throw in once in a while with orchestrations, but the pattern itself may stay the same. Speed it up a little bit more, now you have to change the pattern a little bit. Now we're into the alpha state of consciousness, eight beats per second. We're outwardly directed, we're very aware and awake, our brains are engaged. So we need to give the brain a little bit more to chew on. A little bit more stimulus to relate to so that it can entrain to it. So I may take a rhythm and I may take that as a theme and build off that theme a little bit to create some variability. But I can still stay somewhat musical in the way I do it. The rhythms can be in a typical time signature. They can be rhythms that we, we hear in regular music. We just need to make kind of a composition out of it. We need to tell a story with it. And um, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll play a um, traditional mambo rhythm. It's a 3-3-2 three, three, rhythm I talk about a lot. 3-3-2 three, three, is 1-2-3, one, 1-2-3, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Um, and I demonstrated in the last video where I played a very repetitive form of it, which is just playing open tones on the ones. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one. 
Um, and that was able to help you and train to, uh, say, five beats per second. Sped it up to six beats per second. I needed to change the orchestration. Um, and that, that, that was enough variability to make it work. Get up to seven beats per second, it needs to start varying a little bit. That kind of idea. Now we get into eight beats per second. Now we need to vary it a little bit more. So I'll play a little bit. Um, first of all, let me play this straight ahead. Four beat or eight beat per second pulse, no accents, no variability, the shamanic type rhythm for a couple minutes or maybe not that long, maybe 30 seconds. Give, have you get a chance to see what this feels like? See how the tension kind of builds inside of you, how you really just kind of don't want to listen to it. Um, so I'll play that and then I'll play a variation on the mambo, a 3 3 2 rhythm, a little bit to give you an idea of what it means to create a story around it, create a composition that engages the brain to allow it to entrain. So here's straight ahead. People find that pretty annoying after a few minutes. Um, it's just very repetitive. You, you decipher the pattern very quickly. And one of the things that is required within training to, to alpha is to have enough novelty that the pattern can't be deciphered that easily. You can't predict what's going to happen next. So let me play um, the same tempo, creating the 3-3-2 the three, three, rhythm. I'm going to create a little bit of a composition around it. I'll use that as a basis to come back to, but I'll probably come go fairly far away from a 3-3-2 as I'm playing along. So um, just see how this feels different than that steady pulse. Varying it allows you to stay engaged. Hopefully you found that fairly calming. Um, there was a lot of variation going. I didn't stick with the same rhythm very long. So that's about eight beats per second. That's a great place for calm. Uh, this is what we do with um, most of the calm tracks in Brain Shift Radio, for instance. Uh, the calm category can go as high as nine beats per second and as low as seven, but it stays right around eight. Um, what'll change from track to track is the instrument um, the pitch of the instruments and the, the different rhythms that I use. Um, our custom program, Rhythmic Entrainment Intervention programs, they um, are all at 8 beats per second with varying complexity and intensities of the rhythms themselves. Some of them get very intense and it can change up an awful lot so you really don't have any sense that there's a pattern that you can decipher. It's always changing and evolving. Um, and that's what you need to do when you start getting faster. If you go to BrainShift Radio, for instance, you'll notice that um, when we get into the focusing and the brain boost uh, categories, we're talking now about faster rhythms. Some of them, like I said, will go as up as high as 12 beats per second, which is a really fast tempo. 
Um, that'd be for the more intense uh, to drive the brain to the highest level of, of um, the alpha state of consciousness. But as well, when we do that, now we've created rhythms that are even more unpredictable. I'm going to vary the rhythm a lot more. I'm not going to stay with a pattern very long. It's going to be constantly changing, and oftentimes in a more chaotic way. There'll be more slap tones, uh, more group things at uh, two and three, uh, odd meters, odd inflections, odd patterns, uh, just as a way of, of getting the brain to engage and stay engaged in it. Because novelty is the key when you're in alpha. So let me play a little bit faster, um, maybe about nine, nine and a half beats per second. Uh, I'll take this mambo as an idea. Um, but you'll notice I'll get away from it very quickly and I'll stay away from it for most of the time. So just see if this is um, a little bit more engaging for you, a little bit more focusing feeling than the eight beats per second. The eight beats per second should be fairly calm. Um, you should feel a, a sense of, of, of focus, but you should feel kind of relaxed and calm. This is going to be a little bit different type of focus, so hopefully you'll notice a difference. Uh, I'm not going to play long enough to really probably dig too deep into it, but hopefully you'll be able to get a sense of a difference in the way it happens. That might have been closer to 10 beats per second, but you get the idea. Faster rhythm, uh, more variability, a lot more uh, um, kind of slap tones, more intensity, a little bit more bass tone. Just varying it a lot more so you can't predict what's going to happen. And really that's the continuum. The faster you go uh, to get into a higher level of, of um, brainwave state, the more complex and variable the rhythm needs to be. Um, that's a simple idea of entraining to alpha. Um, Theta, like I said, can be as simple as just a repetitive beat as long as it's at the, the low end, about four beats to four and a half beats per second. You start going a little bit faster, you're adding more variability. Alpha, more variability itself. Um, so if you're drumming and you want to uh, induce an alpha state of consciousness, uh, alpha, uh, from a metronomic perspective, if you're going to be using a metronome and you're going to be playing to it, uh, you want to set your metronome between um, 120 beats per minute and 180 beats per minute. Um, and the metronome is equal, equals a quarter note while you're playing 16th notes. So for every click in the metronome, you're playing four drumming beats. Simple as that. 120 to 180. Um, practice this. Uh, work on uh, taking a pattern and, and work with it and vary it up a little bit. Create a composition around it. Um, I like to think in terms of um, four, eight, sixteen bar phrases. I like to come back to the basic rhythm a little bit if I can, but I also um, want to stretch out far from it. You'll notice in the, the last little bit that I played, I didn't necessarily stay in 4 4 time. So if you were tapping along and trying to figure out what I'm playing, you'll probably notice some of the pieces I was doing got outside of 4-4 four, four and um, were shorter or longer, uh, depending on what I was doing. So let me speed it up a little bit more, give you an idea of, again, what might happen if we go a little bit faster. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to get to 12 beats per second, um, but pr probably pretty close. Um, and I'm going to change the rhythm. I'm not even going to... Uh, actually, I will start with the 3-3-2, three, three, just to give you an idea of, of what that's about. But you'll notice the rhythm kind of gets a little bit further off track. Um, I might do a repetitive kind of thing, but you'll notice it's an odd meter. And that, that, that's what can um, make the re repetition be okay. There's a little bit of a familiarity to it, but it's unusual enough that the brain doesn't really... Uh, do the same thing with it that if you were, if I was just going to play a steady pulse or just the 3-3-2 for instance. 
So uh, I'll play a little bit faster and um, uh, we'll see where this goes. So um, if you're playing drums and you want to get into alpha, just as you go faster, vary it more. As simple as that. So after that, it might be good to go back down to the low end of alpha, kind of create more sense of calm. So I'll, I'll leave this video playing a little bit about eight beats per second. <laughs> 